The average American elementary school enrolls 440 students. The average American middle school enrolls 595 students. The average American high school enrolls 752 students. Across most of America, we see an average of 115 schools enrolling more than 1,000 students. And across the remaining four most disproportionately populous states, we see an average of 885 schools enrolling more than 1,000 students, with California and Texas having hundreds of schools enrolling 2,000 to 5,000 students. This is Robin Dunbar. I don't know if he cares, but he does work at Oxford, where he runs the Social and Evolutionary Neuroscience Research Group in the Department of Experimental Psychology. He is best known for having calculated a possible cognitive limit to the amount of stable relationships the human brain can maintain, the so-called Dunbar's number. He calculated this number by comparing the brains of humans to those of four types of non-human primates. Specifically, he compared a part of the brain called the neocortex, the outermost layer, home to our social and emotional processing. He then found the average social group size for each of the non-human primates. Extrapolating from the difference in neocortex size between humans and these other primates, he calculated a maximum average group size for a human brain to maintain. That number was 147.8, so 150. Most people will say, I have way more than 150 people in my contacts, or I have way, way more than 150 Facebook friends. Sure. But Dunbar is not describing the amount of people we can maintain some general sense of. He describes his figure as the number of people you would not feel embarrassed about joining uninvited if you happen to bump into them in a bar. If I lay he so, people you know pretty well. Anthropological research from the Pleistocene era, when our neocortex is believed to have developed, up through modernity has borne out Dunbar's finding. For example, Neolithic farming villages averaged 150 people, religious settlements in the 16th century averaged 150 people, and even now, army units average 150 soldiers. To quote Dunbar again, primate social groups, unlike most other animals, rely on bondedness to maintain social coherence. So, when groups start getting much larger than 150, we become less bonded to one another and we experience a diminished sense of obligation. The less obligation we feel to each other, the more rules and restrictions become needed in order to maintain even a crude sense of cohesion. This is Deborah Meyer. She cares. In fact, she cares so much, she is considered the founder of the small schools movement. And she has either opened or helped open more than 50 schools in Boston and New York City, each with 400 students or less. Through this work, she has identified seven reasons for the success of small schools. First is governance. A small faculty means everyone can know everyone else's ideas, and school-wide changes can be implemented fast. Second is respect. To quote Meyer, a culture of respect rests on mutual knowledge, and even then it's hardly automatic. Small schools make such knowledge a possibility. Third is simplicity. In Meyer's experience, a school with a complex organization inevitably has to simplify the minds of its students, while a simple school organization allows for intellectually complex students. Fourth is safety. Smaller schools reduce, or ideally erase, anonymity. Strangers are easy to spot, and students get into fewer altercations as staff are better able to spot the signs of emotional turmoil in students they know. Fifth is parent involvement. Small schools don't guarantee the creation of parent-teacher alliances, but they, quote, make it reasonable to put time into creating one. Sixth is accountability. Poor behavior, whether on the side of the student or the teacher, becomes very difficult to hide in a small school. And seventh is belonging. In a small school, students develop more cross-generational relationships, which makes them feel more like part of a community. And as Dunbar told us, bondedness is the key to social cohesion. Because when all is said and done, people are still primates. <laughs>